to some of the research data management training that's been developed recently. Um, and I'm going to close with a bit of um, a description of the different exercises that have been used just to feed on to the practical that we'll do. So we started last week to list some of the resources that are out there. And you have a copy of this in your packs. And it's just a, a Word document. It's kind of small tables. It tells you the name of the resource, um, who's produced it, so which university or project, a basic description of it, so the coverage, um, how long the modules are, and then the licensing, so you know how you can use it and where you can get the content. And we would really like you to add any more that you know of to that. Um, so either in the next um, wee while, just go to the Google Doc, it's openly um, available so you can edit that. Um, or let us know if there's courses that you know of and we can go and add descriptions. There are also, one other thing I'll just flag, um, there are some criteria, the riddles criteria for describing, reviewing and evaluating the courses. And there are some handouts of this just on the table at the back. Um, these have been produced to kind of look at information literacy courses and just to kind of benchmark the different ones. Um, and Stefan over here can tell you more about that. Um, they've been used um, by the RIN um, Information Working Group, is it? And the Damsey Project, which has been looking specifically at data management training. Um, so they've been tested and evaluated quite a lot. So. To actually start going through some of the courses, um, what I'll do is give you a basic introduction to each one. Support DM, you've probably heard of already, is the one that was developed here at UEL um, by the TRAD project, one of the GIST Managing Research Data um, Program projects. And it has six sessions. Um, it's really focusing on the library's role in supporting research data management. So it starts off with a broad overview. And then um, we think about what kind of guidance and support librarians might give to researchers. And then it focuses on things that the librarians are likely to get involved with. So data management planning, because often they're, they're helping researchers write plans. Deciding what to keep, because we find that researchers often don't actually select which data to keep, they want to keep everything. And cataloging and sharing data, because given the, the role of managing repositories, I think this is a key area for librarians too. Each topic is introduced in a face-to-face -face session, and there are presentations available if you want them to reuse that. And then it's explored via exercises and discussion. So there's kind of various handouts that you can reuse there too. And what happens after that? The learning is reinforced by a, an online tutorial. So the, the delegates go away, and over the next couple of weeks, or however long you have between the sessions, they'll go through an online module that just reiterates what's been covered during that session, and there's a practical task to do as well. All of the material's online, and you'll see this in the um, exercise at 12, so by all means reuse it if you'd like. The University of Edinburgh has created a, a DIY training kit for librarians, and this is really a self-directed course. The aim is that a group of librarians who want to know more about research data management and just take this material and kind of run the course as a group. Because at Edinburgh they found that librarians have a lot of knowledge already, there's a lot of experience within the group, and if you just get a group of people together, they can actually get the ideas bouncing off each other. So it's really about building confidence amongst VAs on librarians to support researchers with research data management. You may have come across Mantra before. This was an online tutorial developed for PhD students. And they use the modules of Mantra as pre-reading for the course. So the topics that you can see listed here, there's generally a one or two Mantra modules that cover those topics. And the librarians will read that so they've got a basic grounding in, in the topic. And then when they come together as a group face to face, there's a short presentation. Um, and there are podcasts online of these. So if you don't have somebody locally who's got the expertise and is happy to give a presentation, you can just use the podcasts. And there's a, a series of reflective questions and exercises. And the focus is very much on discussion. It's about the group figuring out together how best to support researchers and, and what the main issues are that they've encountered. You'll see here the topics are really more about the data life cycle. So it's about the different steps that researchers would go through. So initially data management planning, then how to organize and document their data, 
issues around security and storage, ethics and copyright and data sharing. And as I mentioned, there are mantra modules that kind of relate to each of these. Again, this is all openly licensed. It's a Creative Commons attribution only license. So you can take that content and reuse it. And the, the mantra modules, like what's being developed here at UEL, it's using Xerti Online Toolkits. So you can literally just embed that into your Moodle or virtual learning environment. RDM Rose um, was developed at the University of Sheffield. And we've got Andrew Cox at the back, who was involved in that project. So he can tell you more about this. Um, it was to develop taught and CPD learning materials for information professionals, so for library students and also professional librarians. And here there were eight sessions, each of which equated to about half a day of study. Um, and you can see the range of topics that are covered. So we go from the basic grounding in research data management and what role library information services play to then think about the research process and what researchers are actively doing and, and how the library can facilitate and support that. Um, and it focuses, it's got quite practical, there's lots of case studies, lots of hands-on activities to really try and help people reinforce that learning. And they've also developed um, a short two-hour course called RDM Rose Light. Um, and that's an excellent resource, I suggest you look at that too. It's actually been the inspiration for, for a course that we've developed in the DCC called RDM for Librarians. So there's a lot of materials for librarians out there. This DCC course is a three hour course. Um, what we've done, we've taken inspiration from a couple of GISC MRD projects. So there's RDM Rose and, and their light course, it's essentially a set of slides with all of the exercises kind of embedded within it. So it's just one block that you can just take and reuse. And the University of um, Leeds, the Roadmap Project, when they've been developing their courses, they've actually done a handout that goes with it, like a proper manual handbook that walks through the different slides and has extra information. Um, and we found that the delegates in the courses at Leeds really found that useful because they could write over the handbook as they were going through and it was a resource that they could take back and keep on their shelves and refer back to. So what we've done for this DCC course, um, we've developed this kind of single slide set with all the exercises built in with the accompanying handbook. Um, and it starts off with an introduction to data management and then it covers the main kind of topics, data management planning, data sharing and kind of the skill sets that are needed. So largely what skill set support staff need. And at the end, there's a section that you can customise to your institutional context. We did this initially with the University of Northampton, so we had details about their data management policies, um, the support staff at Northampton, what infrastructure was in place so that we could direct people to that. Um, and we used the UK DA's guide, which is a really excellent introductory guide, as some pre-reading. And it's, it's quite an engaging guide, it's got lots of case studies, it's got lots of images, and the librarians who went away and, and looked at that, they actually came with lots of questions because there were lots of things that had kind of piqued their interest. So that's quite a useful resource to use as a kind of pre-reading guide. <coughs> Data Intelligence for Librarians is a four-day course that's run by 3TU, a consortium of technical universities in the Netherlands. And this one is kind of like a summer school. It's a chargeable course. I think it's about 100 euros, and people can sign up for the four days. It's a combination of online learning and face-to-face -face sessions. So they meet and they discuss various topics, and then there's theory on the website and various assignments that they'll do in, in pairs. They generally pair people up, or they go away and do that in their own time and come back to the next day's session. Um, there's more of a focus here on the kind of repository and technical side. So you can see they're covering technical skills and acquisition and advice. And I think that's obviously because it's a consortium of um, data libraries. You'll also hear this afternoon about training for research administrators and IT staff as well. There's been some, some courses developed at the University of Leeds in conjunction with the DCC for research administrators. 
we've run two half day workshops and we've covered various topics. The, the first workshop was quite general and open, it gave an introduction to data management and data sharing and then the follow on workshop focused specifically on pre award staff and they were really interested in what has to be done at the grant application stage, how data management can be costed in. So there's various resources around that and again Leeds have been very good at putting lots of additional resources online, so all of the exercises, all of the kind of write-up of the session, so you can see how people engage with the material, and also all of the feedback from a delegate, so you can go through and see what worked well and what you want to replicate. And in terms of IT training, um, you'll hear from Lorian about some work at the University of Nottingham on the Admire project, and they um, developed um, training for IT staff who engage directly with the research community, so people who have that liaison role. They developed three two-hour sessions, and you can see the coverage of those there. So you have the basic introduction again, the kind of details about what's happening at the institution, what the drivers for research data management are, and then it goes into specifics on data management plans, open data, and the skills that are needed by support staff. So where people need to reskill. So what I want to move on to do next is try and summarise this and think about where there are gaps, what the kind of characteristics are of the courses for different audiences. And probably the first five or six examples were all training courses for librarians. And I think there's an awful lot in that space. There's lots of different types of courses for librarians, different lengths, different ways of engaging. I'd say there's a more of a growing body of materials for research offices, but again, it's only a handful of examples. We've got leads, there's been work done at Manchester and a couple of other universities. Um, and there's some generic crossover materials. So DCC has a lot of generic research data management training materials. And we'll often run courses where we bring library and IT together. Um, but generally, the, the major gap, I would say, is, is training for IT staff. There's been very little in that space. Um, so it would be quite interesting to hear from Laurie about how people have engaged with those materials. And then, obviously, you need to take a different emphasis for each audience. So these are just my reflections on the next slides of, of how I think the different courses are being run and, and shaped. In terms of the library training materials, um, you seem to get a very broad coverage of research data management topics, of all of the life cycle, the different activities that researchers will be engaged in. Um, but data management and data sharing come out as a real focus. I think most courses cover those in some detail. And what struck me about the library courses is that lots of them are really quite in depth. There's several long courses where it's multiple sessions, it's a big commitment from the librarians. They're signing up for, you know, one day out a fortnight for a couple of months. Um, and they often include exercises on kind of engaging with researchers, so either going and interviewing them or some kind of facilitation role. So I think a lot of people, a lot of universities are really <coughs> focusing on the library as, as the main focus of support where kind of that kind of hand holding support will be delivered. In terms of research office training materials, um, from what I've seen so far, they're typically a lot less in depth. They're usually introductory materials, half day workshops, um, just to give a basic overview to research data management so that research office staff, because they're the first point of contact um, when researchers put in together grants, so that they can point them to relevant services in the university. Um, it doesn't seem that people are expecting research office staff to deliver lots of the support. Um, and obviously they, they seem to focus on the early stages of the life cycle, so the data management planning and, and costing research data management. And in terms of IT training, I think it's harder to draw out trends, but Loria made an interesting um, observation that when they were developing the materials at Nottingham, they found it useful to draw a distinction between IT services as a block, so all the kind of corporate and enterprise architecture, and the IT staff who have more of a liaison role, the people who are actually working directly with the research community and having that kind of face-to-face -face interaction. And I think when you look at the librarian training, it's often focused on faculty or academic liaison librarians, the subject librarian role, and I think you'll probably see the same trends emerging with the IT training. 
again, um, covering a general grounding in, in research data management, but I am um, assuming more of an emphasis on storage, security, and access. So things that come up frequently in researchers' requests are things like um, an academic Dropbox, and obviously IT play a key role in delivering these kind of services. So just to draw to a close, I want to focus on a couple of the exercises that you'll see in these different courses, because there's quite a range of, of exercises that, that have been put together, um, all the way from kind of reflective questions, discussion-based exercises in a group, um, to case study examples that people work through, kind of practical tasks that they may well be doing with researchers when they're supporting them, things like quizzes, um, a lot of the online modules have videos embedded in them, and there are also some quite extended tasks that are done as homework in some of these courses. So I'm just going to walk through a few examples of the exercises. And then what we'll do, we'll hear from John, who's going to talk through specifically some of the exercises at UEL, and, and we'll try that out. And I think one from Anya Rose as well, isn't it? So in terms of um, the kind of reflective question, discussion-based exercises, there's a lot of examples of this in the DIY training kit from Edinburgh. So literally every module has a number of reflective questions based on that topic. So that the librarians are coming together and kind of reflecting on what they've learned about data management. So you can see here the questions are things like, you know, where do data management skills fit into a researcher's kind of training? You know, when should you be approaching researchers and trying to give them these skills? Um, and where would you refer researchers to if there were gaps in support for data management? So it's trying to tease out some of the issues. In terms of case studies, um, there was an exercise we did at UEL that, that worked really well. You've probably seen that a lot of universities have research data management guidance web pages. And there aren't any yet at UEL, but they want to develop some. And one of the tasks for the librarians was to go off and look at different universities' provision. Um, everybody was allocated a particular website, and they had to kind of critically reflect on, on that. So what the site covered, the tone, the language, and um, actually what could be taken by UEL as a model to reuse. And that's something that they engaged with really well. They thought that was a very practical, useful exercise because it helped them actually think about what they might develop in their services to support researchers. Uh, an example of a practical exercise from RDM Rose is looking at a number of data management plans and reviewing them. And we've often had the comment when we've done training courses, particularly with research office staff, They've said, well, how do you know what a good data management plan is? You know, how can we say this is good or bad or we shouldn't say this because they don't feel equipped to do it? But I think when you do these exercises, people actually realize that a lot of it is common sense. It's about whether something sounds very sketchy or whether it sounds like a reasonable kind of full answer. Um, so actually looking at a few examples and working through them, I think actually helps build confidence make people think that they would be able to respond and give some useful advice. We've used quizzes in various places. Um, one thing we did at UEL, we had a quiz on the funders data policies, just to make it a bit more engaging, so that we picked out what are those key differences. So the fact that EPSRC is the only one that doesn't want data management plans in the grant application, that's quite an important fact to know, so it's just a way to try and make that easier to remember. And the UK Data Archive has lots of um, exercises in a handbook. They've been used quite a lot by the DIY training kit resource by the University of Edinburgh. This is one about um, reasons to share data and things that researchers will say, well, my data is not of interest to anyone else or I don't have time to prepare the data for sharing. And if you're thinking about replies that you would give to try and encourage people to share, particularly where it's a requirement from their funder. Um, and I would encourage you to go to that URL and download this UK Day Guide. I think it's about 100 pages, and it's got umpteen examples of exercises. There's things about good file naming, data sharing, about file transfers, and it's really very practical. It was developed for researchers, but I think it has a much broader applicability. So there's lots of examples you can take there. 
um, and reuse in your courses. And summary exercises have been used quite a lot as ways to just reinforce learning. So this is an example from the Mantra online modules. At the end of each module, they literally just have a summary. You drag and drop the words in just to make sure that people have picked up the main points. And I mentioned about extended tasks. The one that's been used most, most often is actually going out and interviewing the researcher. And this is an example from RDM Rose where they've got a, a script essentially to talk, talk the librarians through the idea of interviewing a researcher and then think about what they would want to pick out, what questions they would want to ask, what they want to understand about the researcher's work um, and their practices and, and the library's role in supporting that. And the feedback we got from UEL, this was one of the tasks on the Support DM course as well, this was by far and away the thing that book librarians found the most useful because it actually gave them a concrete example of what the research community is facing and what support they need from the library and from IT services. And most people found that was the most valuable exercise that they did throughout the whole course. So if you do one thing, I'd probably recommend that as a task because it gives people a real idea of that engagement process which they'll potentially be going into. And that was the last example. So it was a bit of a whirlwind tour through some of the resources and the kinds of things that are in those courses. Um, I have a fair degree of knowledge of the different ones, so I'm happy to take questions. But a lot of the people who developed them are in the room too, so I may deflect them to the people who actually asked, put, put together these resources. Any questions on what's out there that you can reuse? Yes, Matthew? Um. And since we've got all the materials out there, I had to do data management and do data sharing. Yeah. Um, to be engaging researchers and all that good stuff. What about materials for helping you to build the business case and do that in the first place? So maybe going for internal, justifying mm -hmm. internal funding? Yeah. So that's where the library and the IT come together and justify getting yeah. the internal funding tools to. Yeah, there are. I think, did you have a handout of that DCC guide? There is a DCC guide, literally, on exactly that, on developing research based management services. Um, and a lot has actually come through the GIST MRD programme, so lots of universities have been putting together their business cases. And from the programme events, you've got presentations reflecting on that and actually what the process is, what has worked well. Um, so, really useful reflections like um, the University of Bristol found that when they talked about you know, the compliance driver, that wasn't what sold it. You know, the university was like, well, you know, we'll maybe take that risk. But when they talked about the research benefits, they were like, we could get something from this, we could actually be ahead yeah, of our peers. So yes. the, there's not training materials per se, but there's a lot of content out there about those lessons. Um, so if you look at the GISC MRD program, yeah. particularly the big program events, so the kind of progress workshops, the end of conference, end of program conference um, and the the DCC has been trying to kind of synthesize things. So the main guide we have, um, actually if I can open the web, I'll just show you where it is on the website. Um, we have this developing research data management services how-to guide um, and there's a number of case studies that are coming out to developing RDM services um, and there you can get the link to the how-to guide and um, the case studies that are out so far. I think there's about four or five so far. Any other questions? Yes, Carol? Uh, um, you first signed on uh, data management plans and some yeah. of the plans are already available, which is really useful, uh, but there are, all, there are huge gaps yeah. in terms of the funders that are being looked at. Is there any work taking place in any university to actually look at successful uh, projects and make available the data management plans for those? Um, it's kind of sporadic now, I would say, at the moment. So there's small examples of data management plans being made available, so then one-off, like the one data person got online. 
what the university library is planning is to have a kind of registry of data management plans because researchers often ask to look at an example whether they will make that open or whether it will be an edinburgh only resource um, i'm not entirely sure um, we'd encourage them to make it open but they may you know want to keep it closed for obvious reasons um, what you'll generally find is that research offices already point researchers to example plans um, in fact, we're doing a more public way, people are happy to have us more money on the The main one that's there so far, I mean, it's a US context, but under um, the University of California, San Diego, has a directory of data management plans. They've got 20 plus plans that were submitted to the National Science Foundation. That's the biggest collection of examples I've seen. Uh, but I imagine we will probably see them emerging in the UK. Hopefully. Yes, I mean, what you can do in DMP Online, institutions can customise it and they can um, add kind of examples or custom guidance so that when somebody from that university logs in, they get pointed to you know, the repository at that uni or whatever. Um, we have wanted to build in more examples, but they're, they're a little bit few and far between at the moment. Um, but hopefully we will get more actually built into the tool. Rachel? When we were um, assessing what materials were already out there when we were putting uh, training together in Leeds, actually there is a huge amount of stuff out there and it can be quite difficult to navigate yeah. and know which, you know which is going to be the most appropriate. So is there any one central point where all these training materials are going to be brought together or you know, sort of jump off point? I think to a certain degree, Jorum is hopefully going to do some of that. So the, the two GIST Managing Research Data programs have each have had a, a training strand. The focus in the first program was on disciplinary training materials, and the second program has been on disciplinary plus support staff training. Um, and there's been an obligation to deposit in Joram. Um, it's not always that easy to find content in Joram, and what the aim is to try and pull things together into a kind of research data management portal. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of resources that aren't in Joram as well. Um, I noticed in Joram there is a new Nell research data management. Yes, that's been yeah. part of the Damsey ABC work to put that together. So hopefully the content can kind of be collated in a more usable way. Um, I think there is a, personally I think there's a big role for DCC to try and synthesize some of this too. I mean, we did it initially with the first program. Um, there's a bit on the train, shows how bad our website is, I can't remember exactly where it is. But there's a bit on disciplinary RDM training, um, which links to the resources from the first five disciplinary projects <coughs> and it maps them against the research data management life cycle. So each of these projects cover a different um, discipline where they have content on storage or on repositories or um, whatever, we've kind of indexed it that way. So that's one way to delve into those five courses. But I think a lot more of that work is needed. Oh, sorry. If I can just, just add to that, and I'm sorry for, for plugging a thing that, that Sarah was talking about earlier, the, the criteria that, that has been developed, that have been developed to, uh, to, to describe training resources. And I think in a sense it's, it's, it complements what's, what goes on within Joram because if you have a consistent way of describing training materials, whether it's courses or online resources or whatever, it doesn't necessarily help to make them more discoverable. But, but the fact that you can actually compare like with like might perhaps actually help. Yeah. Uh, so I, mean, I, I think it is probably worthwhile having a, a, a look at it. So I'm afraid I don't have enough copies of, of, of the criteria. They are available online. There are leaflets uh, on the table over there. And uh, having that sort of consistency, and, and, and uh, it's a very common sense way of, you know, of approaching this. You know, what, what, what are the courses for? What are the resources for? Have there been a needs assessment? Or who, who are the courses designed for? Etc. Uh, might again perhaps help a little bit in, in, in uh, heightening the credibility of all this material. Any final questions or move on? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so, one, one. Um, um, so, if you create a new data management plan, yeah. great, there's lots of materials to help you do that. Um, but that's only in sort of great use if the people reviewing that 
and the grown application, or as the funding bodies of the people doing the PMP process also understand what you're getting out of that as well. Yes. Who's training there? And what materials are available for them? <laughs> and is it the same I materials think, that are used by the institutions to create the DMP in the first place? I think um, that comes down largely to the funder. Um, some are far better at it. Um, so the ESRC, for example, may have a data centre infrastructure, and they do actually have a guide for their peer reviewers on how to assess a data management plan. Um, that's the one that's public. I'm sure there are internal documents from some of the other funders that they'll pass on to their peer reviewers. Um, there has been discussion about DCC developing the guide, particularly for that, on how to assess a data management plan. What is it, what it is that you're looking for? What is a, a good response or one that's not quite so sound or not actually an approach that you think is advisable? Because you do see some horrific things written in plans, which you can testify or have looked at AHRC ones as part of the AHDS. Um, so you, do, you definitely do need training so that people know how to review them and, and what is a good plan. Because often it's just the general peer reviewers and they may not have any expertise in data management. Um, so I think that, that is Okay, we'll move on to John, who's going to tell you about RURDI 